let's not waste some drone footage. When I was arriving uh, in Kruje, I was ending with the first half of this aerial overview that I took with the drone on the day of my arrival. And it's just a good opportunity to simply continue and to show you how this is all looking like. This very second day in Kruje, after I got up, I decided to go for a hike. Yeah, and this hike will be what I will cover in the next video. This one is a little walk around on the compound where I was ending up. Good morning. Now the sun is coming up. It's a little bit a mix of clouds and blue stretches in the sky today in the morning. And uh, the night temperatures were about five, four, five degrees. And soon it warmed up enough so that I could open the the door of the car. I have been sitting outside here for a little while and Tigger was walking around. And what I wanted to do, not going into a history lesson, but there is one thing here on this compound that I wanted to show you. Because I'm in Albania and Albania had a time, I may come back to it with a little bit of information later on, but this is not a history lesson. Albania had a time where it was the most locked up country in Europe under a dictatorial communist regime of a person named Enver Hoxha who ruled this country for four decades. Albania was completely shut off from everything else. And Enver Hoxha was, how should I say, without going into a historic account, he was pretty paranoid in controlling the country. And there are many, many awful stories of that that now begin to be getting forgotten look at these bee stocks here but one of the most visible signs of his regime are these huts there are thousands and thousands of them still all over the country he built these huts in a sort of territorial defense effort. Some large, some small. You would enter them. And they are made from heavy concrete. And you would look out there. And of course you can shoot out there. These huts are a landmark in Albania until today because you can't just simply destroy them. Of course you could, but it's heavy concrete. So people live with these structures. And here, for example, the owner of this place has just painted a huge bee on the front of it.
But this is part of the history of Albania, which is a great country. And now, I think the regime ended with the death of Enver Hoxha in 1985. And there was a slow opening of this country. There were many, many turbulences, um, uprisings, and there was a time when weapon storages here in the country were looted by the population and hundreds of thousands or millions of weapons were taken away from these storage sites which is part of my reason why I'm doing my work here uh, not only in Albania uh, but as a consequence of all these conflicts and breakups in the former Yugoslavia of which Albania was not a part there are many many weapons that are still around here and my work is related to helping in um, still in the aftermath but also with developing capacities of governance that contribute to the countries of the Western Balkans to become a part of the European Union. And part of this work <clears throat> with all these conflicts and wars that happened here keep me in the Western Balkans now since 23 years. So when I'm traveling with my camper van of course this is pure delight to live my life as I want it and to be able to do my work. Um, which brings me to Albania, to Tirana for a conference, for example, next week. But I can take you with me. And sometimes a little memory of or a little reference to history it's very useful because these things can quickly get forgotten. But not for the people here who know this time, of course, because they grew up here in a brutal regime that was spying on its citizens, controlling its citizens, locking up, incarcerating people who were not cooperating with the system and killing them, torturing and killing them. Until 1985, that is, in the case of Albania, and then the bumpy time after which, after the dissolution of the regime, and then with regard to the Yugoslav wars that happened towards the end of the 1980s and during the 1990s of the last century, um, there was a lot of war here, which brought me to the Balkans. And, as you see from my travel blogs, I love the Balkans and its people.